How y'all doing? This Matrix Sound Lab. Um, this is the first time I ever did a beat breakdown. Uh, decided to do it because when this particular track, I, I put a lot of meat in there. And I just figured, you know, it's a lot of cats to start now. And when you start out flipping samples, you usually start out doing the basic thing. You pull out the obvious pieces, you know, kick, snare, hi-hat, bass line. Throw it together and you're done. But it's a lot more than you can do to that. So uh, let's get to it. And I'll try not to be too nervous because I never did this before. So bear with me. Let's go. All right. So in this joint, first thing or one of the things I did was I start putting a bunch of, grabbed all my drums. So on this particular set, it's, you see, I got an effect on that one. In fact, let me turn this up. I'll go to my other drum set, which is here. And I only use those for drums, but then I got a couple of sounds that come in later in the song like this. But I had that at a lower volume. We'll get into that later. Here on this particular set, oh, let me see something. Okay, now nah, we'll get back to that. Um, on this particular set here, I had a bunch of drums, those marching band kind of drums, like the college bands and whatnot. So this is what I have here. Now, later in the song, it goes from 105 beats per minute up to 140. So these top ones. So all three of these are the same. This one is at 105 beats per minute. This one is... This one is at 140 and this one is at 70, half of that, because at a certain point, when I jump from 105, I go from there to 140. And then sometimes I play this at half just to give it a different flavor. OK, this group right here is the set of sounds I used from the Enya at 105. So I got this. So the bass line in the beginning, it goes like this. I'm playing them out of order because I can't remember the order that I was playing them in when I make them, when I made the beat rather. And I have this. And I don't know if you notice, one, I got them set. I don't have it set as one shots because when I did play these, I had them set to ADSR. So it'll only play as long as I hold the button down. But I only wanted to taste. And the first one, I wanted that one to echo out because I knew that I was going to be playing these fast and I wanted this to continue to go. So it would be like... Let's go to my next set. Now, these are the next set of Enya samples, but these ones are 140. So here I got. And I used replica on this last one. I knew I was going to end the song with this one. And so I wanted it to carry out a little bit. And the second one has a little bit more on it than the first one. I can hear the difference. You may not hear it when you're listening to the beat, but it was good enough for me. And this is the sound that I used to go from 105 to 140. Also up top, I got these. So 
of course, I don't always play them all in order. But once I got the areas I wanted and I stretched these to 140 and I stretched these to 105 with the exception of this six here, I knew I could do work with that. This right here is the set that I use when I always do the, 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 uh, Matrix Selma, Selma, Selma. But I got a bunch of different artists that say it. Matrix, 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 Matrix. So whatever I'm in the mood for, but it's going to end with Ronnie's voice. Selma, Selma, Selma. Because I think it sounds sexy. What did I do? Okay. Now, when I get up here in a bit wig, which is what I did it all in, I actually did all of my uh, my EQ and stuff for the things on machine within machine. If I'm getting real complex, I'll have the tracks come out individually. On here, this is what I added. Let's solo this out. That may not sound like much, but what I'm going to do is I'll play it again, unsoloed. And let's see, I'm also going to come up to this piece where I have some Reactor 5 action working. What I got, what I added here was this. And I'll unsolo it. Come over here to this last piece where I added a bass line from uh, from complete control. I'll let this play by itself. Now I don't know if that's coming across. I unsolo it. Other thing you might see is this line right here. This right here is the tempo line in Bitwig. I'm gonna zoom in on it. I had to force myself to learn how to use it. Like, oh, hold up, nah, I'm sorry. That's not the volume. That that's the volume. That's some automation that I got on a particular channel. Oh. And of course. Right now, I'm trying to show y'all, so I can't find the, uh, the tempo mat. Ah, I'm not even going to look for it, because then I have to shoot the whole video over again, trying to waste time with that. Anyway, I had to use the tempo map in this, and that was how I took it from uh, 105 to 140, because the original plan was to make two tracks, one at 105 and the other one at 140, using the different sets of samples, and then I just... At the last second, I was like, you know what? Nah, I'm going to put this together. So, uh, that's the breakdown parts. If you want to peep the whole video, uh, I mean, if you want to hear the, the song in its entirety, I will throw a link down in the bottom. And I'm saying this that I'm assuming I'm going to know how to do it right. And if not, I'll put a link somewhere in here for you to click on the whole song so you can hear it together. Um, and then you can... You know, here, like the full presentation, and now it's kind of broken apart. You can see how much work I went it, uh, went into it. So, in conclusion, since people end things with in conclusion, um, when you start out sampling, you go with the basics, but after a while, put in some work. Um, turn that straight sampling into some real artistry. You know, and, and then, you know, you it's a lot of people out there that don't appreciate the art of sampling. And they don't think that we actually produce. It's more to it than what you think. You know, and if you just start now, get good at it. 
keep digging deeper and making more complex stuff. Challenge yourself. That's it. Matrix out.